welcome back to Kasuma Labs. Today, I got something great. I mean, really great, musically great. I mean, I'm gonna show you the Machine Plus, hold up, and the MPC, but hold up. I got something different. I mean, like, really different. I got my robotic arm that's gonna actually test the sensitiveness of both of the machines. Now, the truth of the matter is that you're probably not gonna see this done anywhere else because a lot of times what happens is that people will say native instrument machine plus is better than a Kai MPC live by the way it's the MPC live I'm talking about and because the pads are pretty much the same throughout their whole model line but the thing is this everybody saying well this pad is more sensitive than that pad this pad is greater than this pad blah 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 you get the point the only way to quantize it is to really use a robotic arm. You need something to actually depress down at the right particular pressure, acceleration, etc. etc. When I said that this is consumer labs, we really meant that. We like we really took that to heart because we got a lot of tools in our toolbox to measure different things, right? And today's test is gonna be all about the pads. So if you always want to know what pads are actually more sensitive, or more durable, et cetera, et cetera, this is what you need to watch. Now, with that being said, um, to do this test, like I said, we're gonna use our robotic arm. We also wanted to test out the um, the quality of the pads and the way you would do that was probably use a short durometer meter to do that right because it would actually test out you know the hardness of the pads itself right that's one way of doing it actually probably one of the best ways of doing it we also wanted to test out the thickness of that so we use a caliber to measure that but that took a little trickery to do so because you know it's pads so we had to use a different means of measuring the thickness of each pad so we wind up doing that as well we also want to use ultrasonic ultrasonic sorry to measure to get a little bit more difference on the pads itself the thickness of weather with the pads however in order to do that effectively using ultrasonic uh it will require us to open up the unit and take the pads literally out and uh we wasn't really ready to do that because I buy these materials I'm sorry I buy this equipment myself with my own money and like um <laughs> you know the cost of them right I mean the machine plus by the way machine plus was on sale I hope you got that sale it was like uh two hundred dollars off I paid so I paid like almost a thousand dollars for mine uh machine plus uh for the Kaya uh live I bought this about a couple years ago and I paid about the same amount but anyway I digress so let's get on with the test let's see exactly what happened here and then I'll come back all right let's do it so let's see if the pads will respond at the slightest touch look at the meter where the arrows pointing nothing nothing now with the machine plus let's see if we get a better response look at the screen above where the arrow's pointing and yes we got a response very good without a shadow of a doubt that the machine plus from native instrument is way more responsive than the mpc now i didn't show you all the different tests because it took a while to do this test i just pretty much showed you the end results and from the end results you can see that the native instruments was able to respond with just the slightest touch comparable to the MPC Akai. It was just no doubt, no shadow of a doubt. Now, just, just let me give you a little background about the robotic arm. That robotic arm movement is 0.2, yes, I said 0.2 millimeters. So it's a very small move, movement that you can barely see. Now, in order to get that done, I had to program it. I had programmed the acceleration, the, the speed, and a couple other parameters I had to do and change just to make sure the test was as accurate as possible. With that being said, I will say that if you're going to be doing chords, notes, stuff like that, obviously you need something way more, you need something responsive, right? You need a very responsive when you're just able to move back and forward. If you're going to work on that, like I said, chords, instruments, then you're going to go to the native instruments without a shadow of a doubt. Just that's the way to go. 
Now, if you're going to be handling out a lot of samples and drum tracks and doing drumming and all that type of stuff, you could do notes and chords as well. But then if you're on that level, then you probably want to deal with, guess what? The MPC. And think about it. I mean, think about it. Now, I know some of you are going to be a little upset to hear that, but, but think about this. Native instruments have so much, I mean, so much instruments, so much sounds. They got these bundles that go over a thousand dollars, over a thousand, clearly over a thousand. I'll tell you right now, right? Very expensive. Why? Because they got one of the hugest libraries that I ever possibly seen. All types of instruments, all types of effects, all types of expansions. I mean, they could go on for days and days. I mean, think about it. They got over 96 expansion packets, just that alone. They got over... 30 something types of instruments and more than that i mean it just really really huge they designed the machine plus to deal with both instruments as well as tracks and beats and drums and all that that's why the pads are more responsive than mpc now mpc i've been dealing with mpc for a very long time way back Akai, when they had the floppy disk. So I, I dealt with them for probably longer than most people out there done. With that being said, it was always designed for sampling. That was his main go-to. You want to do sampling, you go to the MPC, without a doubt. It's just one of those machines that, like that. This is why the pads are designed the way they are designed. They are designed so you can hit them as hard as you want to do, go as much as you want, and there will be nothing wrong with that. With that being said, this is why the hardness test, which I had done, which is done by the short drum meter that I have, and we use that meter to determine the hardness of the pads. And of course, MPC worn out. It just, when you're talking about hardness of the pads, they're gonna go to the MPC Akai. They just, they just flat out won that with that. So with this being said, I conclude that, that at the end of the day, you know, if you're talking about different types of music style, different things you're trying to adjust, and you want to know just the quality of the two machines, they're both good machines. They both have quality. But we talk about just the pads, because think about this. You're buying these machines, and what you're going to be interacting with most of the time, I say most of the time, all of the time, is the pads. That's what you're going to be working with. All the time, the pads. We even measure the, the thickness using a caliber. Now, we have to use a couple of different ways of doing that. But we figure out how to do that using a stick, and then we calibrate that using the caliber, et cetera, et cetera. But nevertheless, even with that, we found out for sure that the MPC pads are also definitely more thicker. They're definitely thicker than the um, than the machine, the native instrument. They're thick, they, without a doubt. I mean, they double the thickness of the native instrument. And that just goes to confirm that the MPC was designed for drummers, mostly for drumming and stuff like that. And, and one more thing I'm going to say before I go. Just think about this. MPC catalog, when you buy the machine, when you, I'm sorry, when you buy the Kai MPC, right? Now I have the live, there's live, there's live, there's live 2, there's the MPC X. You get the point. When you buy that, it comes with instruments, don't get me wrong. But they don't have nowhere, they, they're, they're their bundle, their cargo is just, I mean, it's just so, it's its very small compared to native instruments, without a doubt. But I say that not to put them down, it's just to say that that's what they was always designed for. They were designed for sampling. That was their main goal, was sampling. So, with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy it. Leave your comment below. If you disagree or not, just leave it below. But I will say this before I go. Um, keep in mind, we... The way we conducted this test here at Consumer Labs, we want to do it from a perspective of where we're not using our own personal bias opinion, right? I could sit here and just tap out the pads and say, oh, yeah, the, you know, Machine Plus is better than MPC because they just, you know, they seem to be more sensitive or, or vice versa for that matter. But by me using the robotic arm, it was able to actually be able to go down to the millimeters, millimeters literally, to see the actuality on how sensitive, how durable the pads are, and by also using various other tests. Um, like I said earlier, I was gonna use ultrasonic, ultrasonic rather, to see the thickness, but that required me to, like I said before, I'll have to take it apart, and I didn't really wanna do that. You know, these things are pretty expensive, with that being said. 
Lastly, guys, please subscribe. Please subscribe um, and help us. It help us out a lot here on the channel. Um, we're going to be doing more tests, of course. You know, this is Consumer Labs. We're going to be testing other things using robotic arms. We got other types of meters and sensitivity, sensitive equipment and expensive equipment as well to measure different types of things. Uh, right now, we are running the uh, ROG. By the way, that's the Sephiroth. That's the, the double screen laptop. We are running at 24 hours. We're trying to see if it will fail by the heat, you know, see if it is if it's able to deal with, you know, constant strain and and cause some people were saying that the unit, the laptop was overheating. Uh we have not still have not experienced that yet. The fans are working great. We haven't had no problem. I'm just being honest about it. And we've used it various measures, means rather to test it out, thermal imaging camera, contact, uh contact, uh thermometers various different things we programming some other stuff just to see if it does go high off some alarm is set we're doing a whole bunch of things over there also i want to say is that we also still working on the uh, test with the vest now a lot of people seem interested in the vest uh, like i said we were using safe light vest for bullet is a bullet resistant vest and we're going to work out with that now the only thing problem we having with that is that Sometimes some gyms don't want you recording in the gym, so that's a big problem. So we we trying to sneak in there and you know do some recording with the vest on, of course. Uh, like I said, the vest is gonna be underneath our clothing, so they won't see the vest. But the problem is the actual camera. So we trying to you know video record it sneakily without getting in trouble. Let's put it that. Way. So anyway. This is Consumer Lab. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. And you know what? Until next time, we'll talk.